all right, all right. What's up, friends? I want to show you my latest project I'm working on. As you can see, I took over my wife's kitchen here. We don't bake cakes, we bake airplanes in here. All right, I got a drone I'm working on. I know the future of like naval aircraft and the Air Force, they're gonna have these unmanned drones. So this is what I'm coming up with. This here was a prototype that I used to get the CG correct and everything. I used a dual 64 millimeter EDS. But I went ahead and shortened the, the cockpit or the fuselage. Went ahead and shortened this one up since I'm eliminating the whole dude in the cockpit area here. And here are all these missiles and bombs. These are just things I've been playing with. My drop tanks, drop fuel tanks on the bottom I have. Here you can see my controller. I got it all hooked up. I put the little foam tires on there off little microplanes. Just makes it a lot easier to get to your switches. When you're flying, you don't want to have to take your thumb off or anything. I can get to that landing gear down right there. Landing gear back up. Which only makes sense because it's a wheel. Down. Up. Go ahead and fire this bad boy up. Counted the six beeps for the six cell. Things turning out sweet, you guys. I don't have my nose gear hooked up yet, but the afterburner lights sure are turning out cool. show you guys what I got for the landing gear so far. Now I'm using the Elmer's black foam board. I went ahead and double layered it. And I also use these popsicle sticks. It's the same thing I used to install the landing gear on the stealth drone I made. But you can use these popsicle sticks as like, you know, to build up a carbon fiber rod kind of system. You just overlap them wherever you want to strengthen up the jet. This landing gear. You can see I got my landing gear all hooked up. There's my steerable nose wheel. There it is, drop down. profile from the bottom. Of course I'll have all my missiles on here and stuff. But you can see where I doubled up the 
Elmer's foam board. It's two layers thick across the whole nose, and then part of the back wing. And then I'll run my carbon fiber rod spar back here. ahead and did a couple of prototypes with this because I wanted to find out where the CG was. And I also wanted to, I mean the CG is about right here. So anytime you guys are going to build a jet and you're going to install landing gear, retract, retracts like I got, if your CG is here, I only go like about an in, inch and three quarter to two inches behind that CG line. So as you can see, my CG is here. I went about two inches, we'll say two inches from your CG line back. That's where I pop in my re retracts. That way it won't stay on the ass end like that. It'll always come down nose, but not very hard. Plus I got the shock absorber on the front. Just like you can see there. And you always want to put your uh, all your electronics over your center of gravity here. I try to keep them all compacted in. Makes the jet a lot more maneuverable instead of having like servos sticking way out here and retracts out far or, or the EDF unit too far back. And then to make up for the EDF being back here, you got to move your battery forward. I like to try to put all that weight right in the center, right over my CG. That way the plane is very aerobatic and it's going to be one light plane with a powerful fan set up there. I'm using the Chain, chain Sun 10 bladed fan with a free wing 2600 kV motor hooked up with a 6 cell Trinity 2.2 I think it's like 45 to 70 C discharge. All right, I'll get back to you once I get, like I said, it's gonna be more like a, a drone. It's gonna be an unmanned aerial vehicle or a UCAV, unmanned combat aerial vehicle. So I'll be able to make a small fuselage with the intakes up in the nose. Because when you take the, cop, the pilot out of the cockpit, I mean, it leaves you a lot of room to get that air sucked in through the nose. There ain't no cockpit in the way. All right, I'll get back with this when I get more finished up. All right, over now.